You know what? We're living in a day and age right now where everyone's talking about Amazon FBA. So I thought we might as well get the king of Amazon FBA. So straight up question. How much have you made in the two years of you doing Amazon FBA? How much have I made? I won't put specific figure on it, but I've done over a million pound on Amazon in the last year. What is going on, people? Welcome back to the CEO cast, the number one place for showcasing business and entrepreneurship. Now today, you know what? We're living in a day and age right now where everyone's talking about Amazon FBA. So I thought... We might as well get the king of Amazon FBA. I'm with Jake, who's from Manchester, 20 on, 21 years old and absolutely killing the scene. Appreciate it. Yeah? <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah, all good. All uh, good, yeah. Good You'll day? probably tell I am actually from Birmingham, but just moved to Manchester. Just, just moved to, to Manchester. Uh, oh. Make sure everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, from looks, you'll never know from Manchester or Birmingham. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, I think let's start off with people who don't even know what Amazon FBA is, because I didn't know at one point either, yeah. right? What is Amazon FBA and why is everyone talking about it? Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe and set the bell notification to all so you never miss a single episode. Yeah, so most people think that, you know, everything on Amazon is sold by Amazon, but it's not the case. It's only around 10% of the actual stuff on Amazon you're buying from Amazon directly. Um, so Amazon FBA, fulfilled by Amazon. So sellers like myself, you can go on, create a seller account on Amazon, send products in, and Amazon will actually fulfill any orders that you have. They'll pick, pack, and ship them, send them to your customer for you. Yep. Um, so it's just a very good way of, you know, taking advantage of all of Amazon's customers, Plus, you don't have to spend time, you know, employing staff to pack things, send stuff out. It's very scalable. There's a, you know, little seal into it. Mm. So, so how long yeah. have you been doing it for now? Uh, nearly two years now. Okay, yeah. So you would have started when you were 19 years old. Yes. I'm assuming just before lockdown then? Yeah, just before lockdown. Or was it started, in lockdown? Yeah. yeah. It, it would have been about mm, the start-ish of like, I'm terrible with this. <laughs> fair enough, fair <laughs> start of lockdown. So as I mentioned, you're, you're 21, so you're still very young, right? And you're yeah. killing it. But I want to know, just before we got into Amazon FBA, right? What was your whole upbringing like? Obviously, I'm assuming you brought up in Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. I brought so. up in Birmingham, like a little village, middle of nowhere. Um, just quite sheltered childhood, really. Didn't really. Went out with my mates, stuff like that. Uh, but no real business or entrepreneurship no businesses or anything I've always been a little bit entrepreneurial always wanted to do this that and the other always thought you know I don't really want to work for someone I'd rather do something else you know make something of myself um but yeah and then ended up going to uni because I was just like well, what else could I do I couldn't think of you know doing anything at the time so come straight out of college went to uni at Birmingham did geography for a year um and I well, just pure it. geography yeah just geography yeah yeah what was your choice for that I'm not not slightly, I think I'm just wanted, I'm I did interested. geography geology and physics at A level <laughs> Which is horrific. I just love you geography. You wanted to give yourself a stressful life, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, um, I thought it wouldn't be as bad because I loved it at A level. It was just like volcanoes, mountains, and stuff like that. But when it goes to uni, it's like it's more about like how people think. It's like hu more human geography than physical geography. So I just started hating it, didn't enjoy it and just wanted sort of out. And um, after the first year um, in the summer holidays, I just saw like bits and bobs about Amazon. So did various different bits of research, things like that. And then just basically made a seller account, got started. It was terrible at the start because didn't really know what I was doing. Mm. Um, and there wasn't much like information out there that says do this, do that. There was no guides, no, you know, anything really. So I ended up just doing it myself, trialing stuff, losing money here, making a bit of money here, getting marks on my account here because I was selling stuff on private label listings, all sorts of stuff. Um, but eventually, you know, it did take off and done well from it, I guess. So the, the first point when you first heard about Amazon FBA, where did you hear about it or was um, someone else doing it? It was just or? like YouTube videos cause, yeah. because I just wanted out of uni. I was just looking online, like, you know, side hustles, different stuff that I could start. Um, what the options were there when you come across Amazon FBA? I'm assuming dropshipping, probably one of them. Yeah, dropshipping. I did look into it a bit. I had like a tiny dropshipping store that I made on holiday before, but like that was more just to give me something to do. Um, but apart from that, it was basically FBA and dropshipping. And I was like, you know what, I'll try Amazon. It seemed more, uh, you didn't have to like spend money on ads, things like that. Obviously with dropship, you need Facebook ads, whatever. Um, and I thought you'd need like a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more money to put into it. So I just thought, you know what, I'll just start with Amazon, give it a go. Mm. Uh, it's a massive marketplace, isn't it? Huge company. So I was like- Yeah, of course, probably the biggest in the world, especially. Exactly, yeah. It's the so, biggest marketplace in the world. So how yeah. does it exactly work? You buy the product and you send it to Amazon, you send it to the customer, like okay. talk to me about the yeah. whole process. So there's two types of Amazon- 
well, there's multiple types of Amazon, but the main two business models, most people will get started with what's called online and retail arbitrage. Um, so there's a lot of different groups out there that you can go in that group and they'll have what's called lead providers. So they'll give you a lead and it will say, you know, buy this product from Sainsbury's. You can buy it at this price, sell it at this price. This is the profit you'll make. This is how much it sells a month. And you basically buy them from Sainsbury's, send them into Amazon. Um, but again, it's very, um, it's usually like clearance deals, end of line, deleted line. So there is a ceiling to it. Mm -hmm. You can only buy what's there. And if there's only, you know, five dog bones in Sainsbury's, you can only buy those five dog bones unless you start driving around, but then you're wasting money on fuel, wasting time. So it is good. It's a fantastic place to start. And I wish I did that when I started, but I started out sort of the way most people do Amazon now if they are, you know, doing good numbers on Amazon, which is wholesale. So that's going out to various different brands, distributors, suppliers, and basically asking to buy those products off them to sell on Amazon. Um, and again, you know, think how many products there are on Amazon, millions and millions and millions. I think it's something like 350 million products on there. Um, so there's plenty to go around and you basically just go through. I mean, there's a, there's a hell of a lot more to it, but you go through, find products that you like go out speak to distributors speak to brands see if you can buy from them and then you basically buy in bulk they're delivered to you so now most of my stuff comes on pallets because i'm usually buying so much of it um and then all you need to do is put a label on each product. You mm -hmm. don't always have to do it. It's got a barcode on there already, but sometimes they don't link. Again, more complicated stuff, but you get it sent to you, put labels on, and then I'll usually ship it off back to Amazon on a pallet as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, it stays at the Amazon warehouse. That could be multiple different products on that They charge it for well. storage as well or something, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's very minimal. Mm -hmm. um, they're not very expensive, the storage fees at all, especially if you're shifting stuff pretty quickly. I mean, I would never really send stuff in that's going to sit in Amazon for more than a month. Yeah. I'd rather it, you know, stay in my own warehouse. Um, so yeah, you send stuff in, arrives at Amazon and it will sit there until a customer places an order on the listing. When they do, when you do an Amazon FBA, they'll actually pick the order for you, put it in an Amazon box, send it out. That also gives you Prime, which obviously um, gives you a higher share of the sales, if that makes sense. Yep. You can also do a thing called FBM, which is fulfillment, uh, FBM, fulfillment by merchant. Um, so that would be, I, you know, order that pallet to my own warehouse. Yep. I tell Amazon that I have the stock, and list it. Yeah. Then when a customer orders that you product, I have to go to my warehouse, put it in a box, yeah. print out a label, send it off, DPD, whoever it goes with. Um, I feel like the, with the method of you sending it to Amazon makes it more efficient for you, am I exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. All I do is send it to them. That's it. It's out of my hands then. They deal with it. Yeah, it does cost a tiny bit more, but mm. for the time you save, I mean, some days you so can do like- off your head. Yeah, exactly. Some yeah. days you can do 400 orders. You, you'd need like two members of staff to pack that and send them out. It'd be an absolute nightmare. So, and it just stops that scalability. Yeah. I'd rather be able to scale without a ceiling and- you know, spend time on where I need to spend time, which is, you know, finding products, essentially. Yes. Sourcing so the, products. The, the, re the way I see it in my head, right, that differs from drop shipping, essentially, because people relate Amazon and FBA and drop shipping. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, yeah, alongside yeah, of questions each other. all the time about it. I think the way I see it is drop shipping, you don't ever see the stock or you're not no. supposed to anyway. Yeah. Amazon no. FBA, the correct way to do it, you should have the stock. Yes. Send it to Amazon, but you should still see it at some point, right? Essentially, yes. And the thing is with drop shipping as well, if, uh, I think a lot less people are talking about it now simply because of the whole issue with Facebook ads. It's messed up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've never, I've only dabbled in it slightly myself. I've got nowhere near the knowledge to, you know, specifically yeah, yeah, yeah. talk on it. But I just know that, you know, it's usually from China. Someone will place an order and the factory in China will send that product to you. I know you can do it in the UK as well, mm. but obviously you need Facebook ads. No one's going on that website just naturally. Think how many people are going on Amazon. So instead with Amazon, you're taking advantage of all of their customers. They're doing all their SEO, all of their advertising, everything. So their customers are there for you to take advantage of. Mm. Um, there's no risk with ads, anything like that. You can use software to see that the products you are buying are already consistently selling. You can check the yeah. I was just going to ask, so how do you determine what to buy? So it's, that's the hardest part and that's the thing that I teach now, but um, essentially it's sourcing. So there's a few different sourcing methods that you can use. Um, 
And essentially you're going out and finding those products, but there's various different software. So there's one called Jungle Scout that basically gives you sales history. So you can click on a product, look at the previous months, look at the previous days and it'll tell you how many times it's sold. That's pretty much the most accurate one. Um, from there, I use a software called BuyBot Pro, which is essentially a calculator. Mm -hmm. So you'll put in the price that you're paying for it and then put all the VAT in and everything. And it will come out and tell you how much profit you're going to make each time it sells. But all also included on there is a ton of other information and a load of different graphs which show you the price history, where the buy box has been, where Amazon has been priced for, you know, a month, three months, six months, ten months, whatever sort of you want to put it to if that makes sense and you need to learn how to use those which is probably one of the hardest things because it's all well and good finding a product that you can make money on but, yeah. you know, if, if it's at a sort of inflated price and the last six months Amazon have been on there with little gaps where they've been out of stock and the price has gone up. Mm. You're most likely just in one of those little gaps. So if you buy, you know, a ton of units thinking, oh, I can make, you know, three pound profit on each one that sells. And then by the time that gets in stock, Amazon are probably going to be back on there. So there's a lot of checks like that, a lot of product vetting, things like that that you have to do um, to ensure you're not going to come across as huge, basically. Yeah, enough, okay. So before I ask you an example of how it all works of like a specific product, right? For this... For you to scale it properly, you have to have a warehouse then or something, isn't it? Um, I mean, to, to do, you know, multiple six figures and seven figures, it's it's best to have a warehouse. Yeah, because you're not storing all that stuff in your house, bedroom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? mean, if you've got a three-bedroom house and it's just you that lives there, you probably could, but it wouldn't be enjoyable at all. Yeah. Um, especially when you start sending pallets, like it's very hard to get them delivered to your house. You can do it. Don't get me wrong, you can do it. But then it's easier if you have, you know, a warehouse and there's forklift there and everything and you can just put the pallet back on the lorry. Um, it's a hell of a lot easier. So you can go to a warehouse. I did pretty early early on um, must have been about six months in maybe a little bit earlier just because like there was just no room in my house I was like I'd rather have a storage unit mm. and it gets you out of the house as well at the time yeah, it was like lockdown I was like can't wait yeah. <laughs> what was it like in lockdown then because you would run through lockdown I know I personally was ordering so many random bits and bobs of Amazon just because why not you got money to burn you're not going out 100% so I'm sure you must have had some good cash grabs yeah. there um, as, as bad as it is to say, like I would take another lockdown any day of the week because it's like, uh, Q4, you know, end of the year towards Christmas, everything just sells way more than it usually would. But lockdown was just crazy. Um, more due to like the supply and demand, things like that. So yeah. One, I'll tell you about one of the products. I saw cake boxes. That's, you know, a lot of people know me for selling cake boxes at the time. What like? So it's basically a box, paper boxes with yeah. um, like a plastic window at the top. Okay, so and, people uh, who make cakes just put all, yeah. cupcakes in them and yeah. they hold in there. So there was four, there was a uh, four pack ones, six pack ones, 12 pack ones. Mm. And in COVID, there was obviously massive uh, supply and demand, massive shortages just because of COVID or the factories closing down. But at the time, there was also a paper and plastic store uh, shortage mm -hmm. for this specific type of paper and plastic that was needed for these cake boxes. Um, so when I first found them, the price wasn't like as inflated as I'll come on to explain where it was. It was much lower, but I could still make like one pound, two pound profit on them. And they were selling like a thousand times a month. So I was like, fantastic i'll go out and find some suppliers for it um so i come across a few suppliers and it was giving that sort of profit range on there but then i looked a lot deeper a lot of it's about digging trying to find the cheapest supplier the cheapest distributor and you know negotiating for the cheapest price you can only get cheaper prices when you're buying more um so I remember digging right down into Google. It was like the seventh page of Google um, and found this um, website that would, it was basically a cake box distributor. They did everything to do with cake boxes. Um, and they said, find us another price and we'll match it and then beat it by 10%. So I was like, laughing brilliant so I went out and find, found my other cheapest price yeah. went to them and they were like yeah that's fine um you can place an order with us and to get the price that i needed for you know like that cheap to fill a pallet they were mostly doing pallets yeah. um so you needed like a minimum of a pallet um that was something like five grand at the time and this wasn't too deep into when i started how many units would that have been then five grand oh, God. a big pallet um, i'm assuming they were, I was Loads. selling them in packs of 25. Okay, yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure there were 78 boxes and there would be five packs of 25 in each box. So you'd have to do the maths on that. 
Someone do it in the comments, please. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> Something. It was a lot of cash. It was it was at least a couple of grand. Um, and at the time, I was like, I didn't know whether to go for it. I was worried about it. And I was thinking, oh, God, I don't know whether to do it. I don't know what to do. Spoke to a load of people there. Were like, just do it. So I was like, go on then. I'll just do it. So I said to him, yeah, fine. I'll take it. How do I pay? Um, sent the money to his bank. And then he was like, yeah, perfect. So what did um, that cost you? Five grand, you said? Yeah, okay. about five grand. Yeah, yeah I okay. can't remember this. Again, I'm, my memory's terrible. But it was about five grand. Some change, yeah. Sent him the five grand and he was like, perfect, yeah. They'll be with you in two months. And two I was months. like, are you joking? Like, yeah. <laughs> I've just started. I was tying up like most of my money at the time. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. two months, that's crazy. How's it going to, like, what yeah, am I going to yeah, do? Yeah. And then eventually I was um, I was just like, fine, you know what? I'll just have to spend like the other grand or two grand that I had left on other stock just to tide me over the, for the meantime. Eventually they did end up coming sooner. It was like a month. Okay, and yeah. by then I'd been monitoring the listing and the price just kept on going up and up and up. And I just started and I was thinking, oh, is this how Amazon works? Like, you know, prices just go up and up and up. And I was thinking, oh, great, brilliant. Mm. So I was originally meant to be selling them about 12, 13 pounds. For a box of 25. For a box of 20. Well, it was like, a, they were like a plastic wrap sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, for a box of 25. But by the time I had them in, they were selling for about 18 pounds. So I was making like five pound profit on them. So before they even actually got to me, I took another risk and brought another pallets worth, like borrowed some money from my parents for it mm. to buy another pallets worth again, because I knew there was such a long lead time on there yeah. and essentially just kept purchasing them. And the price kept going up and up and up. And eventually I was selling them for like 26 pound for a 25 pack. Um, and they were making crazy money. I did 79 grand just on cake boxes in a month alone. And that was at like 40% margins. So that five grand investment off just that one pallet. Oh, no, 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 no. That was more. Yeah, yeah, of course, more. Of course. Yeah, 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 But yeah. like per five grand pallet, how much money would that have made you? It depends on the price at the time. If they were selling it at £26, I think it was around £10 profit per unit after you took off the fees. So a 5K, 5K worth, it might have been like a pallet and a half. Again, I can't remember the specifics. Um, but about 5K's worth, would you'd pretty much double your money on it, which was insane. Like you you heart, you very, very rarely get that. And, and they just sell, sell like wildfire. I could sell like 150 of them in a day, which was insane. Yeah. So crazy. that must have been taking you a couple of weeks or so just to sell all the... Yeah, yeah. It didn't take that long. They'd, yeah. they'd go in like less than a week. Yeah. So I hate to use the word quick money or the reference, but in theory... At the time, of, it definitely was quick money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. this is why I'm interested in Amazon FBA, right? Because like I said, I've, I've done many episodes of CEO Cost right now. I've learned about many different business, but Amazon FBA has definitely been one for me where I'm like, I really do want to try it. Yeah. But I want to know how much time you got to put into it. I'm a I'm a very busy guy, right? Look, we're in Manchester right now, time so I'm shot. driving half the fucking time anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how much time does someone actually need to scale? Not even scale Amazon FBA, but have it as a side income. Maybe eventually get a warehouse some point in the future to make more money and whatnot. Yeah. But how much time does someone have to dedicate to to scaling to the position you're in right now? So to get to the position I am you definitely need a lot of time. I wouldn't be where I was now if I didn't go like full time, like balls deep yeah. in it very early on. Um, but the thing is with Amazon, you could sell two units a month. You could sell 2000 units a month. It's really up to you how much money you put in, how many products you buy, how much time you put into finding new products. It's completely up to you, the level you scale it to. So a lot of people we teach, they'll get started with online and retail arbitrage, like I mentioned earlier, going out to the supermarkets, buying stuff from there. They'll get started with that slowly get a feel for it you know they'll do it after work on an evening slowly dip their toes in then do a little bit more maybe spend the sunday afternoon then spend the full sunday and then drop down from five days a week to four days a week and slowly reduce it then they end up starting wholesale and then it takes more and more time mm -hmm. at the end of the day the more time you can put into it the more products you'll find the more money you're going to make course, so yeah. It gets very addictive when you very first get started because it's like you you figure that out very quickly that, you know, if I just double the amount of time I'm putting in, obviously not exactly, but you'll find more products because you're putting like more any, time any in. Any sort of thing, if you put exactly. more effort into it, you're going to get more reward from it. Exactly. You're not going to make, you know, 100 grand plus in profit overnight. That's not happening. You're not going to make a thousand pound a day overnight. Like it's not happening. Yeah. But with time, if you keep putting those hours in and hours and hours and hours and invest into it, you can get there eventually without doubt. There's no reason why not. So I mentioned there a second ago, yeah, the position you're in. So straight up question. 
how much have you made in the two years of you doing Amazon FBA? How much have I made? I won't put specific figure on it, but I've done over a million pound on Amazon in the last year. In the last uh, year, okay. In the last so year, that's one year. Uh, so it's multiple six figures. Multiple not six. too high, but still nice for two years. <laughs> that's not bad at all. Yeah. How much of that is profit? How much are you getting? Multiple six figures profit. That oh, is. multiple six yeah, figures. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. In sales, a million quid, over a million quid in the last year. Yeah. yeah. That's fucking mad. So where do you go from here then? How do you scale up? So now it's, you make it eight figures? it's getting employees now, which I'm in the process of doing at the moment, trialing a few out who are basically, I'm going to teach them how to go out and find products. That's essentially my time can only stretch so far. Yeah. I've only got a set amount of hours in the week with all the other stuff that's going on as well. Um, so it's sort of like I need to bring other people in who can find the products and then someone who can sort of run the whole thing. Essentially me stepping away from it, but training other people to run it, if that makes sense, which is easier said than done. Um, but in the process so far, they're going well. Um, and essentially once that works, once I can prove it with one person, more and more and more and just build it from there. Mm. Um, that will hopefully take me to eight figures, which I'm looking to do in hopefully less than five years, but we'll see. Hopefully less. So you'd be 25 billionaire in that? Not a billionaire. <laughs> no, we've got to aspire to be there. I'm a billionaire, 25 year old billionaire. That's a good title for the fod- podcast. Let me, yeah, let me roll title, with It's a good title, but it'd be very hard to achieve on Amazon. Maybe with other stuff, maybe. No, you but, believe in it. Yeah. So as, as a part-time, someone who, does it, who wants to do it part-time, right? How much can be made in it? So it completely depends. I've got mates who do online and retail arbitrage mm-hmm. and they spend like, you know, their evenings, most even don't get me wrong, like they are spending most evenings doing that and quite a bit of time on the weekend, but they still work nine to fives. They can do like four or five K a month in profit after Is it? everything. Yeah, from online and retail arbitrage, that's but that's them like hounding it, like they're doing it every second yeah, when yeah, they're yeah. not at work. Um, so that's the sort of scale you can take it to while working. Yeah. You probably could do more if you're really good at it and just finding those really good products. But again, it's it's luck really what you come across. There's there's Is only a certain well? skill to it. Um, not particularly. I try to stay away from like seasonal stuff. So near Christmas, I don't really buy Christmassy stuff because you've got to be so accurate on how much you're buying because if you don't sell it by, by that time, yeah, what are you going to do? You get it may Christmas not be jumpers or something, and you get five thousand Christmas jumpers, and you only sell thousand. You're exactly, just exactly, which okay. is what happened with the cake boxes. Yeah, I just thought at the time I'd never experienced this time before, so I just thought you know it's just going to keep going up and up and up. I'll just keep buying more and more and more. Yeah, so I did, and obviously there was such a long lead time on it. You know, I'd place an order, and then it'd be a month or two months till they came. But you know, they they could announce that the lockdown was ended, and then it's just like back down. Supplies become back yet yeah, better. It doesn't happen just like that, obviously, but it's a slow process so Mm. i was left with like it was like four or five pallets worth at the end which i still made money on but like nowhere near the money that i was making and some i just like cleared at break even but that's the thing if if you dig down and find those really cheap suppliers and you're buying them for a really good price it's quite hard to make a loss on stuff even if you're sort of overbuying in that situation Uh, i was still able to you know just make 50p a pound or break even on them quite easily um so again it's just like mitigate your risk by buying for so cheap if that makes sense so would you say you've almost like mastered the art now of how much to buy the quantity as well as what products to buy at what time um i wouldn't say mastered there's still definitely more to learn um as in just like the more you buy and the more different products you buy different categories you buy you get a, a lot better at it. If it's just a product that just sells normally and it's been, you know, it sells as much in December as it does in August, it's quite easy to see and work out how much to buy. It also depends if you go to suppliers sometimes now, you know, the price that you need to get it at to make, you know, X amount of money, you'll have to buy, you know, three months worth of stock. Mm. So, those ones you really have to look into, make sure there's been, you know, nothing dodgy going on with the pricing. They've always sold really well um, to ensure that, you know, you're actually going to be able to clear it and make money because at the end of the day, you're tying up cash that's, you know, at risk. You can use credit cards, things like that to help you cash flow. But at the end of the day, you've still got to pay them off. It's still money there. So you have to be very tactical and cautious with it. So I've definitely got better over time, 100%. It's just it's just more time game. The more time you're doing it, the more you put in, the more products you have experience with selling the better you'll be at it, essentially. So I want a sales pitch here, right? You've set up Seller Circle, Mm -hmm. am I correct? Yeah, Seller Circle, yeah. So what does that entail exactly? And I want you to sell it to me uh, to basically, you know, join you alongside doing Amazon FBA. Okay. 
Okay, okay. So and for anyone else who's watching this, in fact. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you seller can get circle. Some customers hear me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> seller circle. Essentially, it's it's basically your one stop shop for everything Amazon. So. FBA, it, it covers everything. How to start, whether you're an absolute beginner or whether you're, you know, doing wholesale already, but still want that little bit more knowledge. Um, so in there, we have a membership section that's £50 a month um, and that's retail and online arbitrage. So going out to stores, buying things from, you know, Argos, Sainsbury's, Tesco's, all those sort of things. It's not always clearance stuff. Don't get me wrong. It can be, you know, stuff that's been the same price all year round, but you can just happen to make money on it with Amazon. Um, so that's that section. That's £50 a month. We in that you'll get weekly calls, chats, community. The best thing you have in there is a live chat. So you can basically open a ticket. It's all within Discord. So all within the same platform, which is what we wanted. Everything just in one hub, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So the live chat, you can open up a ticket and you'll be connected with myself or any of the other Amazon staff. I think it's about seven now that we have in there okay. who are like, really good at Amazon doing it not quite to the same level as me some are like you know nearly there yeah. um, but a lot of them are also providing leads as well so their sort of speciality is online and retail arbitrage rather than wholesale obviously I do wholesale um, so we cover all of that in there any questions that you have you open a ticket and we can speak to you directly one on one we've got full guides in there that will teach you how to get started how to set up your Amazon account limited company all the different checks and hoops that you have to jump through um, very simplified into guides YouTube videos etc um, then we're also bringing on some other stuff many different features um including wholesale mentoring which is basically what i do my speciality uh it will be around 20 to 25 hours of content that's not ready to come out yet we're still building it and making it better if that makes sense yep. um that will be out sort of end of october ish um and we've already got so many people in the group asking about it so it'll be very very popular um that will be sort of limited slots because we don't want to just you know like bring 100 people into it don't just want to open the floodgates that'll be taught live over zoom an hour a week two hours a week still working out the sort of specific logistics of it but it means that everyone will be able to get their questions answered small intimate classes you can ask questions xyz so that's seller circle community it's pretty much everything covered there but we're thinking about so many other different features that can be uh brought into it um which all members will get access to later down the line so let me ask you, why a subscription service and why not just a one-off payment of, let's just say, £1,000 or whatever you would want to price so it So the thing is with it, that, that sort of hires the barrier to entry. The wholesale course will be a separate price, but mm -hmm. the £50 a month, you get everything in there. And also, which one of the main parts is, we provide leads to you. So we'll tell you what products to buy from Sainsbury's, what products to buy from Tesco. Um, and we have lead providers who are going out, checking online, because it can be online as well, and in store, and they'll basically send leads in. I think we do about two to 300 leads a month. Um, and each one of those, you know, can sell anywhere between 30 and a thousand times a month and make anywhere between a pound to we've seen up to like 20 pound profit per unit in there don't get me wrong that's rare um so people can make a hell of a lot of money in there you'd probably run out of money buying the stuff before you know you ran out of time yeah, or anything yeah. like that um the reason we do it monthly is more just to you know ensure that people can get started using the sort of bare minimum as a beginner it makes the barrier to entry lower um we didn't really want to do it a one-time payment because of that reason you know you get less customers people would jump in and then just go we want people in there you know and they can pay each month and then they get access to you know the support each month so rather than just oh yeah here's a pdf go away a thousand yeah. pound we'd rather it be you know 50 pound a month and then we can actually support people build people up show them how to do Have amazon a community around it exactly build a community help them scale and that will you know in turn help us out as well because it will end up bringing more members in as well so it's yeah. a sort of everyone's helping each other if that makes sense we can ensure people do better if they can you know ask us a question three months down the line because when you're doing online and retail arbitrage, fantastic. You'll have loads of questions at the start. But if people then choose to take the jump and scale even further and do wholesale, it's a completely different ball game. You'll feel like you're just starting again. So again, people will have all those questions as well. Um, we also do like weekly calls covering different topics. Um, there's everything included. We basically want it to be, if you want to learn FBA, get involved, whether you're a beginner, expert, wherever you are on that spectrum. I've got more of a personal question for you, right, Jake, mm -hmm. here. What you're you're a twenty one year old guy, you've made over seven figures. Yeah, yeah. That's someone can get very complacent in that in that scenario. Hundred percent. So how do you? What keeps you driven? 
What makes you want to hit that eight figures? You can easily enjoy life a lot right now. I could, yeah. And yeah. be complacent, get the cars. Are you, are you single? Relationship? Nah, relationship, yeah. Oh. Got messes, yeah. Okay, so does that part out the window? Uh, yeah. Getting the girls in that. <laughs> but you could easily get complacent, right? So what, what drives you? I just think it's like, you see other people doing crazy stuff, like making crazy money. And that's what I always thought when I was younger. I was like, well, they can do it. This guy can go out and have a roofing business and, you know, drive a Range Rover or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, if he can do it, why can't I? And then when you get to that level, you're like, oh, this guy's got, you know, a helicopter. This guy's got a yacht. And you just think it's, it, there's no end to it. You will just keep going and it's sort of addictive. I obviously am happy now, but I do want to make more and I will want to grow things. It's more, I enjoy growing businesses. Obviously the money's fantastic as well. There's nothing better than, you know, having a fantastic product that pays you every single day. Um, but it's more just the the want to scale and grow and diversify into so many different other things. Mm. Um, it's more that really that I'm sort of hooked and obsessed with as being an entrepreneur. So then with that being said, where do you imagine your life to be in 10 years time? I'd still want to be working. I wouldn't want to retire. I yeah. don't think I'll ever retire. I think I'll always work. Obviously not to like the level I do now. Like it's pretty flat out now if you saw my calendar. Um, but I don't think I'll ever retire. I'll always want to be involved in something. I want to get into property eventually later down the line, buying them, doing them up, selling them, renting them out, and then eventually building houses like property development. That's like the ultimate end game. But I suppose now is more just like a cash builder to throw into that. And then from there, who knows what will be the next thing. But yeah. it's just building, just growing wealth, I guess, rather than um, having flashy cars and stuff. I'm not, I, I like it, but like, it's I'm quite conservative with my money, I guess, yeah. in a way. I don't really need, I was just like, I'm not, but I like, don't really wear designer clothes. No one really sees me in designer clothes that often because it's like, I don't see the point in it. I don't see the point in spending three, 400 quid on a t-shirt when You're I can put that into Amazon yeah. or yeah, go, I'd places. rather go on holiday or something with my missus. Yeah. I'd rather that. Um, than walk around wearing Louis Vuitton and stuff. It's no real drive for me, really. Oh, I prefer okay. experiences, if that makes sense, and sort of um, just being able to live and still having money coming in, people working for you, businesses running without too much needed, if that makes sense, but still being involved with it because yeah. it is a passion at the end of the day. Throwing it back to Amazon FBA, FBA for a second, right? It just come to my head. Uh, I was watching a uh, like a Q&A sort of thing with Lewis Morgan. Yeah. Um, he was talking about Amazon FBA and he was saying that people setting up Amazon FBA stores and then having the other companies buy them out. Is that a thing? Yeah, that's more private label. So what private label is, that's another part of Amazon. That's like, um, you know, that glass there. I could buy glasses from Amazon, from China, bring them in, put my name on them, call them Jake's glasses. It's just a simple plain glass. I would create my own listing, put adverts on there, and then only I can sell on that listing. Mm -hmm. In that way, you are actually building a, a brand. brand. You're actually building a glassware brand yeah, in theory yeah. and you could sell that to other people. But yes, that's the sort of businesses um, that are brought on Amazon. I don't really know if a wholesale business could be brought because you always need new products. You lose products. Products don't become profitable. You bring new products in. So it probably is doable, but you know, a more valuable to bit business to buy would be private label, which I look into doing eventually. But I prefer wholesale at the moment. It's just put them on there and sell them without the need for ads and X, Y, Z. I'm happy with wholesale, really. So when I get back to the hotel later on tonight, I'm 100% going to set up an Amazon FBA store or something mm -hmm. like that. What's the very first step for myself or anyone else who's watching this right now? Open another tab, people, and, and follow the the following steps. Open a new tab, yep. www.sellercircle.co.uk. <laughs> and then <laughs> in there, that will give you like all the guides, basically. The th I would say, you know, go know, on Google. I, I, didn't, I didn't even see the plug code, <laughs> but yeah. Go on Google, go on YouTube, type in like how to start Amazon FBA. There, there's stuff on there, but most of it is like US Amazon. And I, I'm not, I'm, I'm actually not saying US that. US Amazon and UK Amazon different? Yeah, it's, it's very different to US. It's different company set up, things like that. So... I prefer to just go f to one place and have everything there for me rather than most people will come to us and be like, oh, I'm looking at starting this. And they'll, they'll be saying all this stuff that's like US based Amazon because that's most of the content creators on YouTube. There's not much stuff that is like how to set up in the UK. It is slightly different. Um, 
So as bad as it sounds, like I would go to Seller Circle because it does give you the absolute ex- everything A to Z, A to Z, essentially in a guide, um, and then the discount? support there as well. A lot of you will have a lot of questions, and it's quite hard. Some things you can Google, but you'll get answers from America, answers from Spain. This, you know, it's not the same person telling you what to do, so you can get sort of conflicted answers. So do I get discount? I'm sure we can sort your discount. Oh, it looks like Maybe a free membership if you're lucky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to definitely try it because like I said, it's something I'm interested in. Yeah, 100%. Should be, should yeah, give sick. it a go and you know, ask me if you need any help. We're more than happy to yeah, help. If I make a couple of grand a month, you know, that's all R8 sorted right there. Exactly. Just that's that's the thing. That's that's what I think a lot of people like and why a lot I'm of just people... I'm going to make it clear very quickly. It's not about the car for me. I just came to my head <laughs> before people think I'll do stuff for cars and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, but yeah, go on. A lot of people want just... Um, you know, a little side hustle that will pay those extra bills, especially with what it's what's going on at the minute, recession, energy bills going through the roof, or even just, you know, to have a nicer car. Yeah. If you can have that little side hustle that, you know, you do after work where you're just going to be sitting there watching Netflix. That's the thing with me as well, like going off topic. I can't just sit there. I can't, you know, I couldn't do a nine to five, get home at five and just sit there like this and wait to go to sleep, get up and then do the same thing. I can't do it. I can't sit there. I hate films. Never really watch Were films. Were you ever like that at all? Ever? Nah, never. I, you, I watch YouTube like 20 minutes, 10 minutes, something like that, but I can't just sit there. I don't know, maybe I've got ADHD or something, who knows, but I can't, I can't just sit there and watch it. So even if you're not like that, just get up, stop watching Netflix, stop scrolling on TikTok. That's the main thing I'd say. And just try something, whether it be Amazon, reselling, whatever it is, give it a go. And you can make that sort of little bit of extra money and that helps so many people out. And I think people will wish they started it in six months time, in three months time, when we're in winter and those energy bills really are hitting hard. They'll wish they started it earlier because the earlier that you start it, three months down the line, you'll, you'll have scaled it nicely and you'll be making more than you are now. Mm. Um, so uh, we see a lot of people joining literally just to do it as a side hustle and scale it to wherever they like. And a lot of those people who first started with, oh, I just want to make £100 more a month, £200, £500 more a month, they then take it to that next level and go up and up and up. They get involved with wholesale and grow and grow and grow. Yeah. It's very hard to just stay at one level because you can see you put more hours into it, you'll make more. So it's sort of you like- You can see the growth there. Exactly. The projection exactly, of it. Exactly. So how can it's you just, not It's a simple equation. Yeah. yeah. You find the products, they make money, you send them to Amazon, Amazon pay you. Exactly. It's simple yeah. as that. You find more products, Amazon are going to pay you more. It's very simple. It's just time that's the main constricting factor. Yeah. Yeah, so one thing I forgot to mention, right, is that it's like you guys, you partnered with the Crep Chief guys. Yeah. Yeah, and as we know, they've been on CEO Cars before. Amazing top lads. Good lads. Sat on the right of me, so I'm not just saying that for the sake of it, but this, yeah. Um, so where did you guys meet up? How did this all come so, about? So um, we met up in Manchester, um, spoke to them a few times before. Um, I know they were interested in like doing a little bit of Amazon. Mm-hmm. Originally, it was just going to be a sort of Amazon section in Crep Chief. Yeah. But then we had talks. We spoke for a long time going back and forth, deciding what we wanted to do and eventually came around that it would be better to build like a completely separate platform where, again, there is like no ceiling to it. We can add in so many different features in a whole sort of separate business. And it's just gone from there, really. We only, we haven't even been around a month. Seller Circle hasn't been around for a month now. Um, but there was a, there was about, two months of work before it just prepping we had like beta testers in s- ensuring the leads working ensure the systems working and you know make making everything top tier um and then we could prove to other people that you know those beta testers who were in there for free could follow the leads mm. and make money as well um so there's like success channels in there and stuff like that um and yeah just been growing it from there really how much would i need to start an amazon fba store so at the end of the day it's a question we get all the time it the more the merrier. Um, you you could literally start with twenty pound and just buy one lead mm-hmm. or two leads if you wanted. At the end of the day, the more you can get started with, the better. We usually say around a hundred, two hundred, three hundred pound is a sweet spot for getting started with online and retail arbitrage. Wholesale, you need a little bit more, probably five hundred pound plus. And with wholesale, you know, if you're putting the time in, you will very quickly run out of money because you can find products and usually do have to order them in large bulks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know when. When, when, like when those cake boxes are in, you're you're spending like two, three grand a day on stock alone. Like when you work it out in total. So some days you're spending a lot, but obviously that's when you're scaled to that level. Yeah. Um, just starting out, start with a lot less. Then you can always go through different financing options, things like that. Borrow money off people, whatever. Again, can't yeah, advise on it. But money, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that's not bad. And then let's just say from that two, three hundred pound, that initial investment, 
how much could someone look to make? I know it's probably a hard one to probably yeah, speculate. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. On, so on average. we have like um, we have like a spreadsheet sort of thing. So any leads that our lead providers post, so leads, I mean products, products that are sent into the Discord that we tell people, you know, you can buy this. Is yeah. the price, profit, etc. We have a spreadsheet. So in that spreadsheet goes all those leads, and we can work out like an average ROI, return on investment. Um, and in the online retail arbitrage, we'll see around fifty to sixty percent ROI. Mm-hmm. So if you're starting with three hundred pound, fifty. 50% ROI, you'd get £150 back out. Um, it just depends how long you can clear your stock. So if you're spending that £300 over a month, you'd be making £150 over the month. If you can rotate it a couple of times through the month, then again, it's going to yeah. grow and grow and grow. So people's funds then do tend to grow quite quickly. At the end of the day, the more money that you can sort of keep in the business and grow with, and you've, you've got more to spend, so you can buy more products and make more, the better. Um, so the less money you can sort of take out a lot of people think oh I'm going to make this money then just take it out and then they realise blimey if I keep it in for you know two months I've sort of doubled my buying power um, so it's definitely best to keep it in and reinvest essentially as it is with most businesses really that's, that are sort of cash heavy that's that's a good point to mention there actually right how have you prevented yourself from taking money out of the business because as I said being young you would probably think yeah. it's probably hard to think you know what that, that only costs X amount or that holiday's not that bad, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think when cause we have like software as well as an Amazon seller and you can sort of see how much you've made on that specific day, that specific hour, that specific week. And when things are like flying, so like in COVID or if you've got a couple of specific like really good products in, um, you'll be refreshing that like all day and you'll see like the numbers and there's day I've done a 2000 pound profit day. Like I've done thousands of pounds in profit in a day before. Mm. Um, and those are the days when you're like, mm, like could take a couple of grand out yeah, on yeah. a nice Why holiday. Not, yeah. At the end of the day, it's literally just discipline. Don't get me wrong. I still take money out. Like I still live like a nice life for a 21 year old. I'm very lucky. Um, but it's more just discipline. I just think about, if I can keep that money in and rotate it and make more, then it's better. And you get addicted to that because at the end of the day, that's never going to stop. You're always going to want to keep keep it in there because you can continuously make more. I'm just it's trying just, to imagine it from a perspective of someone who's watching this right now, starts Amazon FBA. Let's just say they didn't start off with the most greatest financial position beforehand. Yeah. They see a lump sum of money and think, I'll enjoy that. Yeah, I can imagine. You know I can I mean? imagine. It's, it's just discipline. It's just discipline. If you want to take it out and spend it and enjoy your life, do it but it's just going to restrict your growth. Yeah. So for me, it really is just discipline. I probably don't live like a life that reflects my income, if that makes sense. I live probably below my means, I'd like to say. Still end up spending a decent amount, but... In your head, do you think that's a good thing or...? um, Yeah, 100%. I could definitely spend less, mm. but um, you've got to live. I always say it's like cliche. I said it earlier to the lads, like, you know, you could go for that nice meal. I will go for that nice meal because I could die tomorrow. Like anything could happen. As grim as it is to say, you could be in a car crash, you could die tomorrow. And I'd be like, why didn't I go for that nice meal? Why yeah. didn't I go on that holiday? Why didn't you? It's, it's the not the same. I don't think it's the same for like clothes and as much material things, unless they are like watches, investments, stuff like that. Um, but I prefer experiences. I prefer to, you know, go on holiday with my missus or whatever. I love that. So. Yeah, you can't be experiences. What would you Definitely. advise someone let's just say a young person, um, I would assume like quite a lot of young people would probably watch this podcast, right? So what would you advise them? What would your tips and tricks to them be? Are not they ne- doing Amazon yet or not? Not necessarily doing Amazon, just someone who's trying to get the side hustle going. Whether okay. they're doing Crep Chief, whether they're doing Amazon FBA, whether they're doing drop shipping, like yeah. just from your personal experience being young, yeah. a hustler, what would you advise them? So if I was in that sort of same situation that I was, I'll give you a few points. Cut down your expenses, just stop going out as much. If mm-hmm. you really want to like, you know, especially as winter's coming up now, just stop going out, stop spending money on stupid stuff. I don't watch Netflix. Don't waste money on any subscriptions, anything like that. Stop buying designer clothes. And then, so that's your money sorted. Time, stop going on TikTok. Stop wasting time with like people that bring no value to you at all. Don't get me wrong. Still go out with your friends and stuff like that. But just be, your time is the most valuable thing. So I'm very precious with my time. I have like, calendar and everything that sort of marks it out to like the hour Mm. um to ensure that i'm sort of maximizing it and i'll always end up working after dinner and whatnot so the more time that you can have the better um if you're working then just work 
around it. Do your side hustle around what you're working and just put effort into it because you will get there. I don't care what you're doing. If you put enough effort to it, into it, enough time into it, people will succeed. Um, I don't care what you're doing. You, you can make it happen. I was having this conversation the other day, just saying like, um, I, it sounds bad, but even if you're in sort of like a bad situation, I feel like you always can find the things that you need to get out of it. Don't get me wrong. Some people are in terrible situations that are very hard to get out of. But, um, you know, if, if you're just in a nine to five, you're not happy with the job, you're not happy with the money you're making and you've got free time, take up that free time doing a side hustle, whether it be Amazon reselling, whatever it is, drop shipping, just give it, give it a try, see what happens. And, um, don't just try it for a week either, especially with Amazon. Try it for a few months and see where it takes you. Yeah, um, see, this is the thing. This is why I say to myself all the time, because right now I'm still like a like a lone wolf almost in CEO cars. I do the editing, all that sort of stuff yeah. most of the time. Now I'm thinking to myself to pay other people to run everything. Mm-hmm. All I want to do is come to a podcast, send the footage to someone else yeah. and get sorted, but then I crack on with Amazon FBA or exactly. do this do this yeah. sort of thing like, and then diversify your time like eventually yeah so that's one of the things that i was quite key on early on as well again i worked out my time is most valuable in sourcing so quite early on i had like my mates in packing all my stuff for me yeah most of them were at uni or whatever and they'd appreciate just like you know eight pound an hour whatever a couple of hours a week Mm. Um, but some some weeks they're in like full-time like full-time jobs but again it's helping them out they're helping me sort of scratch your back or scratch mine and uh, they can be packing while i'm there on my laptop sourcing or i'll just be at home drop them off whatever they can go there by themselves yeah um so again it's sort of you you want to be putting your time into what only you can do with podcasts you can't get someone else in to sit there and ask me questions. Yeah, no, you can't. Your no. brand is you, so you <laughs> yeah, can't yeah. get anyone else in there. Um, so you want to maximise the amount of time that you have to sit there and ask people questions and do podcasts. If you can get someone else to set up your cameras before, if you can get someone to edit it, then that's what I'd say, I guess. Happy days, isn't it? We've got to get there. And the same with me, it's like growing from now. It's more, you know, getting people in to find products, getting people in to do, you know, like the day-to-day admin, the running um, of the business in general, sorting out, sending pallets on sorting out all the logistics keeping track of everything that can be quite time consuming but they are very like low skill jobs it's not hard to put numbers into a spreadsheet it's not hard to book a pallet to be sent off it's not hard to do sort of shipping plans so a shipping plan is say i've got a pallet of you know five different products there could be a hundred of one 200 of the other you've got to do a shipping plan on your seller central on amazon type in and say what you're actually sending to Amazon, tell them the specific products, how many of each one. That takes a while when you're doing multiple pallets a week. And again, it's a very low skill job. So just get someone in to do it for you because there's no point me putting my time, which is quite valuable into that. Instead, I can be sourcing. Um, with, I've said that right. <laughs> in, in, in your case, with you finding employees, right? They've got to have the skill set for that. So would you say you'd have to employ people who already experienced an Amazon FBA and do it for themselves? No, I'd rather teach them because if you're skilled at Amazon, you won't want to work for me because you just find products for yourself. And you yeah. That's the hardest part. So you sort of want to find people who aren't too entrepreneurial because if they're really entrepreneurial, they get started with you, realize exactly what I'm doing and then just go out doing and do it yourself. Yeah. So, um, but it depends. They can be friends. Um, it really does depend. Um, and at the end of the day, if they're sort of vested in you as a person, they want to help you succeed, um, then they're not going to go and do that. So. Yeah, no, of course. You need people who are close to you, really, who are going to do a good job and care about you at the end of the day. Yeah, that's it. Just like any employee, you've got to watch the entrepreneurs. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Dangerous people. (laughs) As we wrap up this podcast, um, I'm sure I've probably missed out on some questions or something that people want to get the information from. Definitely. But you've got YouTube for all of that, right? Yeah, Seller Circle YouTube. Um, I'm sure you may be able to put a link in bio if you're feeling nice. Yeah, of course, you can clip up top right here or top left, whichever it is, I don't know. Nice. Um, But yeah, basically YouTube video um, and we just do videos every two weeks. May start doing more eventually, who knows? Um, But we do one every two weeks, sometimes covering like specific topics, showing us sort of going out, buying stuff from stores so people can see what it's like, the hardship, 
ships, the hard parts, the easy parts, basically just showing what it's like running an FBA business yeah. and covering different topics. So it can be really good and people can get a lot of value from that as well. So I'd advise everyone goes over and uh, checks Who, it who's out. Who's the face of that? Is it Milo? Or is uh, it? Me and Milo. I yeah, me so, yeah. and Milo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's the natural Milo right. seems to get his face in <laughs> <Yeah>. everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's the YouTube channel. So make sure you all check that out in the description below or link up here. And uh, If people want to find you personally as well, can they do so? Oh. Yeah, uh, Jake FBA on Instagram. Yeah. Just Jake FBA. Jake FBA. You smacked it with the handle, mate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's a solid I've one. I've had it for a long time. <laughs> yeah. So make sure you follow Jake FBA on Instagram, Twitter at all. Nah, yeah. don't no, mess no, with no, anything no, else. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, make sure you go follow Jake on Instagram. You can follow my Instagram at Raheem K and at CEO Cost. All of it's going to be in the description below. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure you leave your review, five stars, all of that, saying you enjoyed the podcast. Share it to anyone else who wants to get an Amazon FBA. I'm going to be trying it myself. So maybe we can use myself as like a case study and build like a series on it. Yeah, that'd be Something cool. Like that would be actually quite it. sick actually. Just show people as all well, that like, it works. You know it. What I mean? But other than that, um, make sure you subscribe, like, share, comment your feedback. And until then, I'll catch you on the next episode of CEO Cost. Peace. Lovely. Nice. nice.